Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do a really simple, easy, and quick granny square shrug. We basically just work a granny shell stitch, a granny square, around and around and around and grow that granny square, fold up our sides, sew some seams to create armholes on each side, and work a single crochet border around all of the sides to give it a finished look. Now my table is not big enough to show you how it looks in full, but it is an absolutely simple, easy, and gorgeous little shrug. For this project I have used a Karen Blossom Cakes for the middle portion, and then just some four weight acrylic yarn in this sort of gray blue color to give it a sort of a border and in all honesty I only had one cake of this Karen color so I was forced to use up some of my stash yarn but I love the way it looks for this project I also used a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook now you can use any yarn that you like and any corresponding hook size for that yarn and just create this piece to fit yourself or whoever you're making it for. So once you have your yarn picked out and you've got your crochet hook, we can get started. To start a granny square, we're going to start with a magic ring. You can also start with a chain three or four and slip stitch back into the first to create a ring. I'm going to chain three and work two double crochets into that ring. Chain three, and work three double crochets right back into that ring. Chain three, and work three double crochets right into that ring. Chain three, and work three double crochets right back into that same ring, and you should have four granny clusters. One, two, three, four. Now we need to attach to our beginning. I'm going to chain three for the corner and slip stitch into the top of our first chain three. Now we can pull that tail to cinch up that circle and we have a granny square. For this pattern, we're going to be working a chain three into each corner. So for each corner, we're going to be working a chain three, and in between our shells on the sides, we're going to be doing a chain one. So I am going to slip stitch over the next two stitches until we get to this corner, and I'm going to slip stitch right into that corner, and now I can continue my granny pattern. Chain three, Work two double crochets into that chain three space, chain three for my corner, and work three double crochets into that same chain three space, and we've created our first corner on round two. We need to jump over to this corner so in between, I'm going to chain one, and now I'm going to work three double crochets into that next corner. Chain three, and three double crochets into that same space. Chain one, now we're jumping, three double crochets into that chain three corner space, work 
four at the corner, so chain three, and three double crochets right back into that same space. We need to get to this corner. I'm going to chain one and work three double crochets into that last chain three corner space. Chain three and three more double crochets into that space. Chain one and now we're just going to slip stitch to the beginning chain three. And now you've got rounds one and two and that's how you count your rounds. You kind of look for those shells and you can kind of go up on a diagonal. There's round one, there's round two, and now we're on round three. Round three is the same concept. Slip stitch until you get to a chain space. So for me right here, it's that chain three corner space. I'm going to work a corner. So I'm going to chain three and work two double crochets into that space. Chain three and work three double crochets right back into that space. So each granny shell is a three double crochet stitches. So you've got three double crochets here in the corner separated by a chain three and three more double crochets on the sides. We chain one and then we work our three double crochets for our granny shell stitch. We need to get to that corner so I'm going to chain one and then work my corner which is three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. And you just keep working this around and around and around and you'll create a very large granny square at the end. So you just keep working this around, slip stitch at the end, slip stitch in the top stitches to get to a corner space or you may be at a space on the side. Remember that each corner gets three chains in between those shells and each corner has technically six double crochets in them. We've got three at the beginning, then a chain three, and three at the end. The sides are separated by a chain one and then you work a three double crochet into each side space until you get to the next corner. So keep working that around. Every so often once you get, once the size starts building, you'll be able to throw this over your shoulder and kind of gauge on the size that you need for your shrug. I have worked the entire cake of this Blossom Cakes. This had 481 yards in a cake and I've got a decent sized granny square going, but I do want this to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go hunt through my stash because I only had one ball of this, which by the way is super pretty worked up. I have worked an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this sort of gray blue color here. Fits perfectly with the color in that Karen cake. So super happy with that. Now my table is not big enough to show you this full size, but I will tell you that from side to side, this square measures 33 inches. So it's 33 inches wide and 33 inches tall. To turn this into a nice cozy shrug, what you want to do, lie it out flat and you want to take that top left corner and fold it down halfway. So it should be this corner here, pull it down to the almost the middle of your square. Depending on the size, it may not reach that center square, that first 
round that we did for the granny. You also want to take your right side and do the same thing. So you're kind of folding it up like this. You take the bottom left corner and you do the same thing. So you really want to try to put all of your corners together. And then, let's move it up here so you guys can see. And then you're going to sew about seven inches from these two corners, seven inches along, and this opening over here will be your armhole. So if you want a smaller armhole, then you can sew a little bit more. It's just personal preference. I suggest just sewing it up, trying it on, or even pinning it with something, trying it on and seeing how large you want your armhole. You would then do the same thing on this side, six, seven inches. Like I said, if you want a smaller armhole, you would sew more inches this way. And you can sew this in your preferred method. You can crochet slip stitch for seven inches. You can use a single crochet, however you want to join up those two sides. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sew up my two sides here to create the armholes, and then I'll show you what it looks like. I have sewn up my sleeves. I did the same thing with this one. You may notice that this, these edges here, I left unfinished. So you can see they're unfinished here. I did that because I want to add a single crochet border. So here's my neck up here. I'm just going to add a single crochet border. So a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. It comes down to the bottom and it comes back up and around. That is completely optional. If you're not going to add any kind of a border, then I recommend obviously sewing up these ends here a little bit tighter. Here's my armhole. Now I left a lot of room for an arm just because I wanted a more drapey look, but obviously you can sew it up more and it'll be a little bit more snug around your arm if you so desire. I am also going to work a single crochet border around this armhole and the other one just to kind of give it some finishing edges. But again, that's totally up to you. If you want to put a border on, I will show you quickly how to get started, but you're basically just going to work a single crochet into every stitch all the way around your edges. So I started with a slip knot on my hook. This is up by my collar or on my neck, and I'm just going to pick a stitch. And slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work a single crochet right back into that stitch and a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. In these chain one spaces, I'm just going to work right into the space because it's easier, but otherwise I will be working directly into each stitch. I'm trying to work over my tail so I have less to weave in at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way around and then I will show you what it looks like.